The process of getting humans off the ground and into the air took quite some time to figure out, and even now we've only had flying machines for a short time. Here we've gathered some of the heroes, those who have distinguished themselves from the pack in our quest for knowledge and exploration. Strap in and hold on tight, this is Incredible Heroes of Human Flight. Number 10, Sally Ride. In 1977, Sally Ride was studying physics at Stanford University when she stumbled upon a NASA ad in her school's newspaper. It said that they were looking for female astronauts, so of course, Ride applied and ended up becoming one of just six women selected, beating out thousands of others. Just a few years later, in 1983, Ride rode to space and was a science officer on the Challenger, which made her the first American woman ever to get to space. She quickly gained fame and served as an incredible inspiration to girls and women around the United States. She went back to space one more time in 1984 on the Challenger once again, bringing her total time in space to 343 hours. Ride also aided NASA's investigation of the Challenger disaster in 1986, the same disaster that got her third and final space mission cancelled. Before passing away in 2012, she sealed her fate as an icon by writing several science children's books and starting a company called Sally Ride Science and continues to inspire young girls and women to pursue science today. Number 9 Howard Hughes Hughes had dreams, and then he inherited a ton of money at 18, making it possible for him to make those dreams come true. He quickly moved to Hollywood and began making movies, which in turn led him to fall in love with flying. Just 10 years later, he started Hughes Aircraft Company and produced arguably one of the most beautiful airplanes ever, the H1 Racer, which he used to go 352 miles per hour, breaking the speed record at the time in 1938. He also took the plane from Burbank, California to New York in just 7 hours and 28 seconds, breaking his previous record doing the same flight in a different plane. Hughes broke many records before he went on to acquire TWA Airlines, where he commissioned the building of the Lockheed 049 Constellation, an aircraft that became a massive success. Then he turned his attention to the H-4 Hercules, also known as the Spruce Goose. The Spruce Goose was massive and meant to carry 750 troops at a time overseas, but it wasn't finished until after the war and only flew once. We won't even go into his extraordinary personal life, let's save that one for another video. Anyways, Howard Hughes made an enormous impact on aviation and ranked number 25 on Flying Magazine's 51 Heroes of Aviation list. Number 8. Otto Lilienthal Our next crazy fella is Otto Lilienthal, a German aviation pioneer who earned the nickname Flying Man. In the 19th century, before the Wright brothers' experimental flights, there was Lilienthal, who researched and experimented with flight himself. He designed crafts of his own in the form of long-range gliders, in which he made many successful, repeated, and well-documented flights. He wasn't one to embrace newer technologies like rudders and ailerons though, and instead used weight shift principles to steer his craft, which is where a person moves his or her body to change directions during flight. However, his designs and implementation were crucial steps toward getting humans in flight, and he successfully shifted perceptions on the possibility of flying machines. Sadly, he lost control of his glider on August 9, 1896, fell around 50 feet to the ground, and sustained injuries that would take his life the next day. Number 7. Bessie Coleman This here was both the first woman of Native American descent and the first woman of African American descent to earn a pilot's license. In the United States in the early 1900s, women, African Americans, and Native Americans had no opportunities for flight training. She went overseas and trained as a pilot in France after saving her hard-earned money to do so. In 1921, she earned her international pilot license and soon after became a celebrity in the United States upon her return. She flew in air shows over the next few years and was even offered a role in a movie which she declined. Then, on April 30, 1926, while preparing for an air show, she was in the passenger seat of an old Curtis JN4, Jenny, without a seatbelt to examine the terrain below for a parachute jump for the next day. The plane unexpectedly dove and went into a spin, throwing her from the craft at 2,000 feet, and she impacted the ground. While her life was cut short, her legacy lived on and continues to do so to this day. 
Number 6. Amelia Earhart you knew this name was going to pop up at some point. Now, this young lady did a whole lot to generate huge interest in aviation by doing the things she did. Earhart didn't even ride as a passenger in a plane until she was 23 in 1920, but that ride made up her mind that she had to fly. She quickly got her foot in the door, taking her first lesson on January 3rd, 1921, and things took off from there. By October 22nd, 1922, she set a world record for female pilots by flying to an altitude of 14,000 feet, and Earhart became just the 16th woman to get a pilot's license on May 15th, 1923. On June 27, 1928, she became the first woman to cross the Atlantic in a plane, and although she was just a passenger, it earned her international fame. For the next few years, she flew competitively, endorsed aviation, helped start an airline with Charles Lindbergh, took Eleanor Roosevelt on her first ride in a plane, and became the face of numerous products. In 1932, she flew solo across the Atlantic, which increased her fame, but in 1937, tragedy struck. She and her co-pilot, Fred Noonan, while attempting to circumnavigate the globe, disappeared after leaving Ley Airfield in Papua New Guinea, never to be seen or heard from again. Number 5. Alberto Santos Dumont you wouldn't think the rich heir born to a family of coffee makers would have much to do with aviation, but Alberto Santos Dumont definitely did. Santos Dumont wholly dedicated his life to studying aeronautics, delving into physics, electricity, chemistry, and mechanics after moving to Paris in 1892. He began developing hot air balloons and then turned his attention to non-rigid airships eventually winning the Deutsche Delle Mirth Prize on October 19, 1901, when he took an airship from the Parc St. Cloud, flew it to the Eiffel Tower, and then flew back in under half an hour. He won 125,000 francs for the feat, which he donated a bunch of to the poor and gave the rest to his workers. On October 23, 1906, he flew a length of 197 feet at the height of 15 feet in his 14 Biz Canard plane in front of a crowd, and his plane did it entirely under its own power. The Wright brothers' planes still needed the assistance of launching rails to take off at the time, whereas Santos Dumont's could lift off under its own power on wheels, and many argue that technically Alberto Santos Dumont was the first ever to fly an airplane. Number 4. Chuck Yeager there are pilots, then there are legendary pilots, and Chuck Yeager is of the latter group. When he was just 18 years old, Yeager enlisted in the United States Army Air Forces in 1941 and at first worked as a mechanic. On March 10, 1943, Yeager earned his wings and trained to be a fighter pilot. On March 5, 1944, he was shot out of the sky but managed to escape to Spain with the help of the French resistance the Maquis and got back to England. He got right back on the horse and on October 12, 1944, he became an ace in a day by taking down five enemy planes in one day, and he was one of the first ever pilots to down an enemy Messerschmitt Me 262. He became a famed test pilot after the Second World War and was the first person to break the sound barrier, and he continued to test new emerging flight technology over the next seven years, cementing his legendary status. Number 3. Charles Lindbergh this young man was a true inspiration to people around the world. He started with a fascination in the mechanics behind motorized transport, so he enrolled in school as a mechanical engineer. He was quickly drawn to planes and dropped out of college to follow his passion. He enlisted in flight school and experienced his first flight as a passenger on April 9, 1922. That was it. He was hooked. He took his first solo flight in May 1923 and bought a surplus Jenny Curtis JN4 which he flew 140 miles across the country about a week later. In 1924, he joined up with the United States Army Air Service and began a year of military flight training, and he graduated first in his class in 1925. Then in 1927, Lindbergh made history by flying his plane Spirit of St. Louis from Roosevelt Field in New York to Paris, France in the first transatlantic flight. It took only 33 and a half hours and inspired the imaginations of countless generations to come. Number 2. Neil Armstrong 
What can we say? The man's a legend. There are few people on this earth who haven't heard of Neil Armstrong. He was the first person to set foot on the moon. Armstrong grew up fascinated by the achievements of the Wright brothers in aviation, and at just six years old, he got to ride in his first plane, a Ford Trimotor. He got his pilot's license before he obtained a driver's license when he was just 15, and before anyone knew it, he was a pilot for the U.S. Navy during the Korean War. And after that, he was a test pilot. In 1962, he joined the NASA Astronaut Corps, and he made his first space flight in 1966 on Gemini 8. A little over three years later, he made history by becoming the first person to stand on the moon, which sparked an interest in aviation, space travel, and engineering around the world. We've seen some amazing pilots and astronauts so far, and we still have the top spot left. But first we'd like to ask, who are some of your favorite pilots or flight heroes? We know we left a lot off this list for time's sake, so let us know who you'd like to see featured in a future video in the comments below. Number 1. Orville and Wilbur Wright of course, the Wright brothers are some of the most famous that the world of aviation has to offer. We mean they kind of started it all. On December 17, 1903, they managed to get their Wright flyer off the ground, sustain flight, and keep control. It went down in history as the first ever powered heavier-than-air flight, and although it only lasted for 12 seconds, it changed the course of history forever. In the beginning, just five newspapers published the feat, and many skeptics just couldn't believe such a thing was possible. They continued to pursue their dreams, documenting every step of the way, and further developed their machine. The Wrights also performed demonstrations all around the nation, proving that there was no room for doubt in their accomplishment. They sold the government of the U.S. its first plane in 1909, started a flight school, and worked on perfecting human flight for the rest of their lives. If you enjoyed this video, do us a favor and give it a like. Subscribe to our channel so that you can always keep up with our informative uploads. And be sure to check out this next video we handpicked just for you.